Hi everyone. So in this video we will learn about TCP timers. TCP is one of the important protocol of the TCP IP protocol suite and exists in the transport layer. As you know that this protocol is very reliable, connection oriented and provide most of the functionality. And this is only possible because of many timers are actually working in this layer. So these are the different timers that, uh, that the TCP actually is having, retransmission, persistence, keep alive and time wait timer. So we'll see one by one each of these timers. So first comes the retransmission timer, which is actually used to retransmit, the switch timer is used to retransmit the segment. Normally we represent this transaction using this timeline. So we have one is sender and the other is receiver. We know that both the ends are maintaining the buffers, we call it window. So we have a buffer or a window at the transport layer and then we have this application layer and the process which is running at the application layer will provide the data to the transport layer. So the transport layer consumes the data from this layer and will data will sit here. Now when this data when it is delivered we are calling it segment when segment is sent to the receiver then this transmission will start and we call it retransmission timer now this timer is having some value that is dependent on the parameters like congestions the bandwidth so to calculate this value we will have a separate video that how to calculate this value so based on this value this timer has to uh, means run and when this timer got expired and if there is no acknowledgement for this segment sent it has to resend the segment again so what does it mean it means whenever this segment is sent the timer will start let's say this is the duration of this timer and within this time if there is no acknowledgement received for the segment then the packet is retransmitted so this is the work of retransmission timer take a note that when the packet has to be delivered if it is not acknowledged timer is a position timer which is uh, activated when there is a zero window advertisement what does it mean it means that let us take a scenario we are representing to a timeline that sender and receiver and sender is sending some data to the receiver and we are assuming that the process running at the receiver side is slow so the the rate of consumption from the buffer is very slow now we are assuming that this buffer gets full and because this process is very slow and it consumes the data very slowly let's say it consumes one byte of data so generally the scenario is uh, if there is one byte of space is available the receiver may advertise that okay my RWND equals to 1 that means it is saying to the sender that I have this much capacity you can send me one byte of data but if this is if this thing is happening then this is a case of silly window syndrome that means we are not effectively utilizing the bandwidth and we are increasing the traffic in the network which is not actually suggested to overcome this we have a Clark proposition means Clark has suggested one solution that whenever this is a scenario then the receiver has to announce RWND equal to zero that means the receiver is saying that I have no buffer space available kindly hold and don't send me more data till I announce so let's say the sender receives this information from the receiver RWND equals to zero that means the sender will not send much more means any more data to the receiver and waiting from the receiver side to get information about its window Let's say after some time the receiver is sending uh, information about the RMWND. Let's say this more bytes are consumed from the buffer and is used by the process. Let's say this is 100 bytes. Now, receiver wants to announce that now I have RWND equals to 100 and you can send me 100 bytes of data. But this particular packet gets lost or not reaching to the sender then what will happen 
Receiver thinks that I have already informed about my window size and sender assumes that I have to wait because at the other side the window is zero. So there is a kind of deadlock where both are waiting for each other. To come, up, to come out of this kind of condition, there is a timer that is called persistent timer. So persistent timer is actually helping us to resolve this kind of deadlock and keep the things going smoothly. So what is persistent timer? This receiver will announce that my RWND equal to zero. That means my I don't have any buffer. Don't send you more data. To avoid the deadlock, there is persistent timer will be invoked at the sender side whose value will be equal to the RTO. So whatever the RTO value is at the sender side will be assigned to position timer. The meaning of this is this this timer will start and will wait for this much duration. And if there is no more response from the receiver side, then it will send one message. We are calling it a probe message. It's a kind of message to the receiver to say that I am waiting for you. Kindly give me some reply. Tell me the status of your window. It will send the probe and then this PT value will be set to double of RTU. And then it will wait for this much time to get a reply. If there is no reply, it will again send one more probe and it will set the it will set the PT value equals to twice of the RTU. Means this is actually double of the RTU and then it will be 4 times the RTO and it's keep on sending the probe messages just to ask the other side tell me about uh, tell me about the RW and the status but we have one threshold value that value is 60 that means 60 seconds that means this PT value is keep on doubling the RTO value but it will be only doubling up to it reaches to 60 once it reaches to 60 seconds then after every 60 seconds it will send the prop message so what does it mean it means initially it will be pt value is rto it becomes twice of rto which will be less than 60 less than 60 then in the second prop it will be four times rto and should be less than 60 it means if let's say Initially the RTO is 6 seconds or 5 seconds then PT will be the 5 seconds then in the sending after sending first probe it becomes 10 seconds then it becomes 20 seconds it becomes 40 seconds and then it becomes 60 and then onwards it will keep will be keep on value 60 seconds because this is something threshold so one is reaches to the threshold it will be remains 60 so this is how this percentage timer will work to make sure that there will be no deadlock then the next timer is the keep alive timer as the name says keep alive this is to use to make sure that the machines which are in communications are alive they are not idle we know that the tcp is a connection oriented protocol and whenever the two machines communicate they are actually dedicating some resource to each other resources like bandwidth like cpu uh, cpu time like uh, uh, buffers available so it is actually very necessary to make sure that the two uh, come that the two machines are actually utilizing these resources so how it is managed let's this is a client and this is a server so whenever the client sends something to the server there is a kind of timer this is called keep alive timer which is get activated then uh, sender sends something and then client sends something so keep alive timer will always be active when it will hear something from the client whenever it hears from the client it will reset that means it want to make sure at what time i am hearing the last time from the client so if this is a keep alive timer is 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 set here it, it, it starts here 
when it gets something again from the client it will again restart means reset again when it get from the client it will reset this timer actually make sure or just to uh, make a record at what time the last it hears from the client normally the clip live timer is uh, is uh, two hours means for the two hours the connection will be kept uh, connected and by passing after passing this this has to be disconnected so what is happening if server is not getting any message or any data from the client side then at the expiry of keep alive timer it will send one probe it's a kind of message that I am waiting for you do you want to interact with me and then after 75 seconds after 75 seconds it will send 10 props second prop then 75 second wait third prop fourth prop fifth prop so it will send 10 props each after 75 seconds if there is no response from the client side then it is assumed that the client is no more interested to communicate and the connection will be will be kind of disconnected and all the resources will be released this is how the keep live timer works then the next is a time wait timer time wait timer is basically activated when the connection termination request will be issued or so this is used during the when when the two machines get disconnected now the objective of this is to make sure okay we'll see the scenario to understand it in a better way this is the sender this is the receiver let's say the two machines are communicating and when they're communicating we know that we need to have some port number let's say this is the port number x assigned to the process running at this side and this is port number y and uh, we are assuming that uh, that sender is sending some message to the receiver let's say it sends some segment and uh, the sequence number sx and it is delivered to the receiver but it has not reached and then uh, the sender said i want to disconnect and receiver acknowledges okay you can disconnect and they have disconnected this connection means now there is no more connection that means all the resources which are actually occupied with by these two hosts are released that also means that now the port number which is actually used by this process is now free and can be used by any other process when this when this is disconnected we are assuming that another process starts and let's say it also gets this port number x this port the the new process which is actually started after this disconnection will get the same port number and now say they are also this is sending some packet to receiver with a sequence number x now let us assume that when this packet goes to the receiver this this pad this packet which is actually somewhere get lost in the network is also reaching to the other side now the receiver is getting two packets with the same sequence number and same port number so it's a kind of confliction that how to resolve this so in this scenario it is not able to provide this packet to the old process and the new packet to the new process now this is the kind of a problem now to resolve this kind of situation we have this time wait timer so time wait timer is activated whenever there is a connection terminated means whenever this is a connection will be means it get disconnected this timer will be activated what does it mean it means whenever this is disconnected this time wait timer will be activated and the duration of this time wait timer is two times of the lifetime of the packet now what is the purpose of this the purpose of this is if this is timer is activated that means during this time this connection although means this is disconnected means that means now they are not allowed to send any more packet they are not sharing or they are not transferring the packet but the connection will still be alive connection will alive means the resources which is actually dedicated to both the machines will still be there that means this port number is still not free now let's say after some time if this is reaching to the other side because the port number is live the connection is live this can be easily delivered to the previous process if 
this is reaching to the other side after this duration then there is no meaning of this packet because this packet is already dead it's already crossed this uh, this uh, lifetime limit so this timer is actually to make sure that if there is any pending packet which is reaching after the, the disconnection will be supplied uh, to the process correctly so we have seen that different timers are having important roles and this makes the TCP communication reliable so we'll see more about the TCP and uh, how it works in our next videos thank you very much